Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on scientific programming using Python. Now, this is actually the last tutorial in this series, okay, where I'll be explaining you guys a little bit about Python, the F2Pipe module that is available in Python, and uh, okay and uh, we'll be concluding we'll be concluding with that and also we'll be looking at uh, the vakari uh, i'll be mentioning you about uh, the vakari um, uh, online 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 terminal for python okay now let me tell about Python. see uh, Python is actually a combination of python and c okay this methodology helps you to write write a code in python using a little little bit of adjust by making little bit adjustments to your python script and uh, and to get your job done okay uh, i'll just explain you guys what it what it means okay you have let's say you have a python code okay and then uh, what the major problem we notice many is that um, python codes are much, several times slower then your uh, then your codes that are made in uh, compiled languages like C or Fortran. Reason uh, Python is actually interpreted language, and you cannot expect the uh, and you cannot expect an interpreted language to behave at a very. I mean, you cannot expect uh, your interpreted language to run as fast as a compiled uh, compiled language. Why is it so? It's bec why is it so? It's because that's how the internal architecture is. But you can make a little adjustments to make your code run faster. Now, how is that possible? Uh, it's possible using Cython. Now, what does Cython does is that Cython is actually a uh, uh, possibility available in, available in for, uh, Python, wherein you write your you write a Python code. Okay, write a Python code, and you make a little more adjustments to the already existing conditions in Python code okay and then you execute it and then you execute it uh, we're using a using a series of steps and now after the series of steps what will happen is that you will get uh, you will get a uh, you will get some you will get a c code uh, you will you'll generate a c code or the python code will generate a python object okay with the python object okay and if you run this run that code or execute it what you'll notice is that that code will be very very fast than your conventional python code okay and and the speed will be comparable to that of a c code okay that's about that's the, uh, uh, the specialty of, about cython so the implement the implement the uh, the ide ide advantage here is that write a python code okay make a few more adjustments and these few more adjustments make sure that you have a python code that is running as fast as a c code now how about that by making a few adjustments to a python code you will getting a extremely fast output similar to that of a c code okay now that will be this now the thing is this is worth really worth experimenting but it's a little hard to implement it's a little hard to understand a little, little hard to understand and comprehend as to how the workshop work is done but it's not difficult okay in the process it actually uh, uh, in the process it actually uses c libraries and everything so as a reason as a result if you wanted to work with cython and everything you have to have c uh, uh, c for program installed in your system for this to work with other than that cython is very beneficial in that way okay also uh, for fortran users there is this option called as f2py now what this does is that okay let's say you have a fortran file uh let's say you have a fortran file okay what does what what f2py does is that uh, you take a fort you write a fortran file and uh, make all the subroutines functions and everything in it and write them in the, in the script okay now f2py what it does is that uh, it uh, compiles the fortran code and produces a python object okay python object and this object becomes actually a module the, uh, you can import this object as a module inside python and uh, wherever you need to import wherever you need to do uh, invoke the function just import in, invoke it like a regular python code i mean regular option re regular function or a subroutine just like that just like how you import a uh, mo module function or a module subroutine in python import it just like uh, use just like that 
and what will happen is that though it's now you're running in python those operations where you invoke the fortran subroutine or fortran function using the f2 module they'll run at, at a speed that's comparable to that of fortran same as that of fortran so in this way what you can do is that you can invoke fortran procedures that is function and subroutines inside python it you it it makes a lot of it i mean you can use this where you where you do a lot of serious tedious operations okay very quickly pass all the numerically uh, computer numerically extensive computational operations to fortran uh, into fortran to enable the speed okay and uh, let the python take control of the overall feature so you run a fortran you run a python code but in the in, but but uh, during the process for pass all the important contents important to content which has to be crunch which has to be done very quickly to fortran to fortran library mo modules okay fortran modules like something like an outsourcing kind of a thing pa outsource it to fortran and get the jobs done over there and in get the results back to python to continue with the to continue with the pro work as a result tedious operations get done passed to fortran if depending on your code and then your speed is retained by python i mean not your speed but the entire overall control is retained by python in this way it's this way f2py is actually a nice tool to combine speed of fortran and the simplicity of python now how to make it is that what you have to do is that write a fortran file having all the subroutines and modules not a program not a fortran program a fortran file having all the subroutines and modules that you want and compile it using f2py to generate a shared object and import the shared object as a module in python and use it like a regular python class function or object and that is it as simple as that now if you do it it's fine now the only disadvantage i mean the only disadvantage i've noticed about f2py is that okay is that it does not support derived objects or the pointer op pointer operations that are available in python uh, sorry that are available in uh, fortran it uh, it it uh, it works with the uh, multi dimensional arrays and everything that's not at all a problem but it does not support derived data, data types okay that's the uh, one thing and second disadvantage i noticed is that f2py works extremely nice and extremely superb and uh, superb with uh, python 2 whereas the same f2py implementation in python 3 uh, to be honest it's not re not ready yet uh, honestly it's not ready yet so as a so as a consequence sometimes if you run if you run uh, i f2py Uh, in python 3 it may not work so just a heads up okay but people are trying to implement f2py and you might find one or two libraries here and there especially for fedora where f2py is implemented in numpy mod numpy arrays okay it might work but uh, just just letting you know okay uh, i can keep um, and also there's something about wakari i promise i'll show you what wakari is Okay, Wakari is actually a web-based Python data analysis tool wherein uh, it it helps you to have uh, an online online notebook. Okay, what you can do is that you just uh, write your own username, write give a username, email, email or password, create your own account, and once you do it, what you'll have is that you'll have access to. Uh, you will have an you will have access to i uh, an online ipython note uh, online ipython notebook and i think you have options to have a, a editor terminal an ipython notebook or just a file script and everything all of them online you also have the option of ipython notebooks over there and if you guys want to know want to know how this done and everything watch this video over there from the web page and this will help you guys to understand how wakari 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 works so this is another tool suppose if you guys do not have python installed in your system and if you want to show somebody as to how python works and everything and all these kind of stuff sometimes for a very short term purposes you can use wakari you can use wakari for the same and more it is free it is free okay uh that's what they mention here free usage is uh, of wakari center in this internet for trial and occasional usage okay okay and if you want to have use this on a very long term basis long term basis or if you want more demanding features then you have to go to the plans and pricing options okay and then you have to uh 
go about with it what you have is that uh, for a free plan with nothing what you have is that you will have about 512 mb of ram C ram availability for your execution and you have 10 gb of disk space that is on a free account on the other on the free account if you have a pro account as well where you have to pay like 25 dollars a month and with that you'll get about uh, 50 gb of hard 50 gb of hard disk space because though it's online it gets it gets run in some other computer that some other server space cloud space somewhere else okay and you'll have like four uh, multi-core CPU processor with four cores okay and then you have a secure host uh, connection so that you can download the things and uh, you have long running jumps meaning you run a certain job quit the computer and come back and after some time you go ahead you'll generate you, I mean you don't have to be specifically online you can just submit a work and let it run and then come back and go about with it so there are this is a pro plan which you can do and I guess for most of the general applications uh, a free account is sufficient so it's worth it's worth a try and uh, you have about uh, these are more details about how things are going on okay you have like more uh, unlimited uploads and un very very less l limited uploads and unlimited downloads and options and you have like uh, these features over here and you have about uh, 90 minutes time to interact and like that and all so for any system for uh, if you just sign in i think you have like 90 minutes per session to run it and something of that sort uh, that's about it so you guys, you guys can have a look at it and uh, look at it i haven't used vakari much but i've heard about it so i thought i'll just mentioning you guys up so this is kind of useful in one way so one way so depending on your case most of you guys may not find it necessary but some of you it might be useful so have a look and that's a little about vakari and finally thank you guys for watching this tutorial series and this we come to an end of this tutorial series okay and uh, this i hope that i've given you guys sufficient amount of tools and information to work with python and uh, proceed f proceed further okay now in the subsequent there will be a lot more uh, tutorials that are coming up in the future where will be where i'll be explaining you guys how Py how python can be used for several other options and uh, stuff okay i'm just as as of now i'm just planning for uh, including python for a uh, little more of an advanced operations and then also some more demonstration video there will be a lot of demonstration videos in the future where i'll be explaining you guys how to work with python and uh, Use them a little more detail and everything. Okay, uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, see you guys. See you guys in the next tutorial series. Take care then. Bye.